Facebook or Twitter or any other social network, listen up. There may not be enough laws to protect your privacy. It seems the Internet is leaving the legal system in the dust. Computer security expert Peter Vogel breaks it all down for us. And look, if we're all on social media, and I know I am, I'm going to be paying close, close attention. That is next. So it's kind of funny that we all, uh, yes, I'm guilty as well, we scream about our privacy rights, that they're not protected. But then we go on to Facebook, we punch a, post a bunch of stuff about ourselves. Uh, but Facebook has a private a policy, right? A privacy policy, so does MySpace, so does Twitter. So we're covered, right? Mm, maybe not so much. There are dangers here a lot of us haven't exactly considered. And here to uh, help explain all of these uh, potential dangers is Peter Vogel, a lawyer and a computer analyst, uh, computer industry specialist. He's also wears a bunch of hats. He's an adjunct professor of e-commerce law at SMU, Southern Methodist University. Uh, Peter, nice to have you on. Uh, oh, let, let's talk privacy here. How, how, a couple of questions right out of the, the gate here. How, how long is Facebook's privacy poly, policy, how long has that been, been, been set? Would Americans really even understand it, and how much does it actually protect us? Uh, that's more than one question. But I'll try to deal with all of them. Uh, actually, actually, Facebook makes changes to its privacy policy from time to time. It's part of the deal. Um, usually, when I take a show of hands about people that read privacy policies, no one ever bothers to read them. Uh, but Facebook, when they've made some major changes, there's been a lot of, of pushback. And so the biggest change happened February about a year and a half ago. And... Um, now when you post things on Facebook, they can use it as long as it's there. And then once you take it down, uh, they no longer have the right to use it. But in terms of privacy, most people don't bother checking and evaluating what they want to make private or keep public. It's only like an afterthought. Hey, hang on a second. Somebody just got my information. I, be I better check my privacy settings. My second question is this, and in the information you gave one of our producers, I was surprised to think that um, you know, we assume that the government, there are, there are requirements, regulations to protect us, but, uh, sir, that is not necessarily the case. Well, let's talk about different countries. In the U.S., the privacy laws are protected by the Federal Trade Commission, and the, under the current law, uh, a website is not required to have a privacy policy at all in the huh. United States. Uh, on the other hand, if there is a privacy policy, uh, the Federal Trade Commission makes sure that uh, people enforce whatever it is. So, for instance, let's say that you land on a, a site like uh, Google or something, and it says they will not use your personal identifiable information. Well, if they use your personal identifiable information, the Federal Trade Commission will come after them, sanction them, and make either that or make them change their policies. But for Twitter, for example, there is no requirement you have to have a privacy policy well not really because if you go look at the privacy policy in the terms of use on Twitter you're encouraging them to push that information out you don't want privacy the whole point of putting it something uh, uh, posting tweets is, is to get it out that there you want them to share it. yeah as a matter of fact what you do is you give them an unlimited copyright they can do anything want they want with the tweet and even change the content if they want. You brought up a good point about how, you know, the U.S. is very much so different than other countries. And I want to talk specifically about email, right? It's something we all do uh, morning, noon, and night. Uh, and in Europe, it's protected. Here in the U.S., it's not. So your boss can, you know, legally read your email. So why can't we get that well, one done? What's the deal? I... I don't know about legal, illegal on that. That's maybe a, 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 What's the better word? a label put on it. But here, here, well, let's put it this way. In the United States, there's a presumption that an email is private to the employer. And in the EU, Canada, Japan, and a number of other countries, the presumption is it's private to the employee. So there's a different privacy expectation. Now, if, there's, if an employee is using a webmail service and not the employer's, uh, email service, they're entitled to that kind of privacy. It's a matter of whether they're using their employer service or not. Bottom line, we need to be so aware. So the, the bigger... Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I know. I, no, I was going to say one of the bigger complications gets in then when businesses have uh, emails between countries, like if a, a company right. is operating and there's emails between the EU and the, and the United States, Under which, which law applies gets to be... Right, under which yeah, jurisdiction would, would that fall? It's complicated. It's right. We're trying to educate ourselves. And bottom line, we all have to be careful what we write, what we tweet, what we Facebook. Kind of more, more often Absolutely. than not. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Pe the Peter Federal Vogel. Trade Commission. Yeah. And the, thank Peter you. Vogel, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Got to move on. Now to this.